I got here for you. Okay, great. Then we're perfect. I did finally get the Um, I'm just reporting on top. Do you do, you do anything else? Why don't we see an image and a video? Did you start video? I click on the arrow here. Yeah, start video. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, the camera's here, right in front of us. Yeah, there's one there and there's one there. So are you okay if I let you mess with that and we can start the meeting? Are you reporting on yours? Okay. I, it is 9.01. I'll call the meeting to order. Can you stand Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, to let everyone know, the meetings are being audio and video recorded. Please silence your cell phone. If you like, yes, if you can't sign up, computers are available. Um, Jesse, have you, had, have you had time to review any of the uh, meeting minutes? <clears throat> okay, so then I have to tell you that. Oh, is Peter on? I can't find anybody. He's in the lobby. He's in the lobby, so we're going to let admit. Peter, can you hear us? No, can't hear you. Peter is connected. Yeah. Oh, okay. Unmute. Hi, everybody. Oh, yay. Okay. Sorry about that, Peter. We're having a little bit of technical operation issues. Oh, that's okay. So I noticed the, uh, the camera. Yeah. Says it's off. Um, yeah. If you go into that little like wheel looking icon in the bottom, like on the on the taskbar for yeah. OBI or OBS, excuse me. Yeah. Um, there's a button on the right hand side for start uh, virtual camera. There we go. We're good. Cool. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. Can you see us? Not not yet. Do you see it in broadcasting studio? Oh, sound like where where'd you go? Where yeah, you're you're very low all of a sudden. Hold on. I'm I'm changing my headset around. Give me give me uh, one second. So it says start virtual camera. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there? Yeah, we I can see you. I can see you. Uh, let me turn my video on so you can see me. If you go back to Zoom, you should see me. You okay there? Yep, I'm I'm okay. Can you oh, uh, do me do me a favor, flip it back to Zoom because it's sitting there on OBS. Yeah. All right, Peter, this is my reading meeting, so we're gonna go through pretty fast. Um uh, we already did the Pledge of Allegiance. If you didn't catch that, I'm gonna make the motion. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Before um, you get uh, before you get into the thick of it, Irene, put the yeah. uh, the screen back to Zoom because you're in OBS right now behind you. So I just click on Zoom. Yep, just click on Zoom. Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. Well, you're home. Okay. So we could just wait and see if there's any other participants. Oh, that that's lovely, isn't that? You look very good, Peter. Well, <laughs> thank you. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, just wait come back. We have a lot of videos of this. Yeah. All right, thank you. Peter, you have to teach us how to do this. <laughs> no worries. All right. Let the, um, we're going to, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of January 20, 20 2024 workshop meeting. Uh, before we do that, do we want to do that today or do we want to do that Thursday? If you, we could, let's wait till Thursday then to do all the meeting minutes. Yeah, I'm that's fine. Sure that's fine. Have them all finished up. So that would probably be. Oh, okay. For, uh, okay. So this is. Okay. So I have the, the, this is a BOS meeting agenda, not a workshop meeting. Forgive me, I'm just working off that because you usually slightly different agenda. My, my best. All right, we're going to move on to the next item then. Public comments, please come up to the podium and state your name and address. Richard Trotman, 1045 South Bird Road, Richland, PA. Uh, we have I don't know whether we we were marking down wrong times for the time we left and stuff for our meetings. 
Is that the way it's going to be or, or not? Okay. So my understanding is previously the habit was where you come in and you go to the class, you get paid from the time that you showed up at the building, and then you go to the class. Um, typically, I could speak for myself, probably Jesse, and, and more like than not Peter. Um, industry standard usually is you don't get paid time to travel to that class. You get paid from the time that you're in the class and get paid mileage. So not having that clearly understood uh, by us or by you at that time, I would say at this time, for this time, we will pay for the time that you arrived at the building, from the time that you traveled to the building, to the class and back. Going forward, we're working on a policy manual that's, that clearly delineates when you get paid. So again, I just took a class in Virginia. I did not get paid for my driving time, so to speak. I was not paid my hourly wage. I was paid my mileage, but I only got paid from the moment I sat in that classroom from the time I, I left that classroom and I received mileage because I don't think my employer wants to pay me for 13 hours of work driving back and forth for work that I actually didn't perform. So for this instance, because there was a misunderstanding and it was on our part and it, was, it wasn't clear, we will make sure I'm not making motion, but I, I think the discussion is we'll we'll make sure that you get paid from the moment that you step into the building to the moment that you return. But going forward, I think the best policy is to have you understand you'll get paid for the time you're in the class, you'll get paid for mileage going to and coming back from, but you're not going to get paid hourly rates for travel time. And that's industry standard, I think. So um we have to include that in the next agenda. Yeah. It's it's not not too. Yeah. But it's this this like yeah. everything else i want to just add one thing that if we have something that has developed as a de facto standard over the years we have to adhere to that until we define a new standard we have to we have to be consistent and in, in one way or the other until yeah. we make a an official line in the sand yeah well uh uh two other two, two other employees went along with me i drove uh, well, well, they get paid too. Everybody can be pretty the same. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they then, in the future instance of that you, butch, they wouldn't get well, mileage. Uh, only only the driver in the future would get mileage, just so that you kind of understand what's what's coming down the line. So if you and Don and Dave piled into a car and you drove, they would get the time that they're at the class. the actual class. But you would get the class plus the mileage since you used your car. You put wear and tear on your vehicle. Oh, I I I don't totally agree with that because you're we we are on our we are on conscious time going to and coming home from me. Um, but if that's the way you want to do it, I guess we have no choice. I just won't go to any any meetings anymore. And then, and then, and for me, that's a problem because we need you to keep up with standards too. We need you to keep up with training and we can't create an exception for you when everyone else, this, this is what gets done. Again, I wrote to Virginia for a class. I did not get paid my hourly rate for driving to that class, even though I'm employed and I'm going there for a work function. I didn't get paid for that. Peter's traveling all over the country. He's not getting paid for the time he's sitting on a train or sitting on a plane. He is getting paid for the time he's present in the training or the work that he has to do. So, you know, maybe you could take a step back and say, okay, uh, think, think about it for a little bit, but but this is what industry standard is. If you don't want to keep up with, with current education, then that's another issue that we have to um, look at because we need you to keep up on best practices. So if you don't want to go to any training, um, then that's something that we have to consider too. Wow. Okay. be a requirement for your position. Yeah. yeah. That training could be a requirement for your position. It's a requirement for all positions when you were training. There's always continuing educations with well, anyone. I talked to several people and I also talked to other content supervisors. Right. And they all do it different, but uh, every other content paid from the time they started to a so let me just give you an example of like how Penske does it, and they're a big company, right? So if each thing is set up as a district, right? So there's multiple locations in a district, right? 
my home location, right? Let's say I'm, I'm based out of Red Ace. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And I drive to work. I just drive to work. But they tell me the next day, you got to go to Lancaster location. They would pay me as an hourly individual that would pay me my mileage because that's not my home location, right? They pay me my mileage on, from Google Maps there and back, correct? All right. But as soon as you become salary, then you don't even get mileage. You just are salary. So that's the difference between hourly, yeah. hourly and salary. So, salary. But so just, we, just we to throw that salary. There's there's commonalities. There's a core there's a core underlying kind of consistency on a lot of things. And I'll use me as an example. I get mileage if I drive my own car, even though I am salary. Um, and I know in the the retail space, like if you were a branch employee, if you had to go to a different branch than your own, you wouldn't get mileage from your home. You get mileage from your home branch. So there's there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of it's it's again very very uh, similar very. Very much the same, but it does vary a little bit from place to place. But the underlying theme here is that as a whole, the industry um, does sort of treat this different because for what it's worth, Butch, on the surface, I agree with you. If you clock in at Marion Township, there's really not a huge functional difference between you going and driving to a class or you going and driving one of the trucks out somewhere to trim a tree. But there is there is a difference and there is a a a standard that we're not just creating something we're not reinventing the wheel we're looking at other other portions of industry and taking what they have and, and basically kind of adapting it for for our township well then uh are you just gonna are you just gonna reimburse for three hours each for that meeting okay. yeah when yeah, you'll, that fly you'll, for this particular time you guys that went will be paid for the time in transit because that's that's kind of what the the current operating model has been and yeah. and we're gonna we're not gonna go against what is the established norm on that but that is something that we are going to be changing in an official manner so that it is very clear cut and has no ambiguity to it whatsoever okay well, just wondering me because uh I I know uh, there's a fella here that that isn't suited either, but I'm I'm doing the talking for you, so we understand much. We understand. Um, so okay then. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, Peter. Good morning. My name is Dan Klein. I live at 14 Rosebush Court in Stone Frog Village. Uh, approximately two weeks ago, Steve Weaver, who I understand is now the fire chief for Marion Township, brought his bumper truck over to Stone Frog Village to test the dry hydrants. And we had a stream of about 20 feet for maybe seven, eight minutes, and then the stream shut down, and Steve had to shut the pumper truck down because he wasn't drawing any water from the pond into the pumper truck, and he opened the hose going into the pumper truck, and we discovered approximately 50 baby catfish in the screens, of the dry hydrant and the pumper truck. And I showed the township supervisors here a picture of that. I would I'd show it to you, but you probably couldn't see it. I'll give it a try. Let's uh, say if you can text it to me or email it to me, Dan. Yeah. Well, I read that the same thing. And to Chuck. But the catfish look too small to eat, Peter. Yeah, uh, they're, they're not, they're not, I don't know if you could see that or not, Peter. Not, not easily. Like I said, you can, if you text it to me, but that, that yeah. does present a problem. That's something that we are going to need to talk to Chuck about, because if it's not able to uh, adequately sustain the kind of throughput and you're, you're sucking uh, fish and other debris in that are going to result in clogs, that's, yeah. that's a safety issue for, for the residents of Stonecroft. Yeah, I mean, the lots of plans called for Stone Group to drain that pond and check the liner and make sure everything was okay so that we could use it as our fire suppression system 
since we do not have fire hydrants in that development. And uh, again, I asked the township supervisor, please do not release any money to Stone Roof until these things are taken care of. The pond does not belong to us. That is not, it's part of Lot 215, but it was not designated to the HOA at Stone Crawford Village at this point. And the infield is the other area that has not been designated to us as well. So Stone Group still owns those two pieces of property in the development. Thank you. Chuck's very diligent. If, if there's something that has not been cleared by bonds, he will, he will definitely make sure things are yep. are. Yes. Yeah. And if there's something that's a safety related thing, he's certainly not going to send the recommendation to us to release the bond money based on that. Well, uh, they had requested bond money not last month, but the month before, and then they withdrew the request. They had surveyors in there putting all these stakes and flags and everything else, and then we didn't see or hear from anybody. Grass started growing. Everybody pulled the stakes and flags out of the ground, started mowing their property. So I don't know where they are with that project. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank, thank you. And we do have, I do have a copy of your letter. I'll take a couple more. I'll take them and get them copied. And we will go door to door to each resident in the community hand it out and explain to them why we're asking them to sign this petition. And once we get them all collected and gathered, we'll bring them back here to the township building. Thank you. Thank you. It's very much appreciated, Dan. Thank you. You're welcome. Next item is the Olson Design Group, the presentation for the uh, purpose new building. Lee Olson um, will have a proposal for grant preparation letter of support. Did you have any comments on that? Yes, yes, Thank you. So after the special meeting held, um, Lee and I discussed the request for further feasibility studies and how to move forward with that project. Um, he submitted a rough draft to me, um, not yesterday, but uh, Thursday evening. And we went over it yesterday and he's making some final changes just in terms of um, delineating what one study will do, how the community engagement stakeholder engagement will work, mm -hmm. um, how he envisions having everybody come in and do multiple meetings and discuss all the design parameters. And we will be complete with that by 12 noon today. Excellent. And um, it doesn't have to be signed by the supervisor because that is something you're gonna discuss. But in terms of the grant, he includes a budget for us. So he's going to give a rough, you know, cost opinion of what it would take to get there so that we can request the adequate amount of funds for sexual services. Um, and on that same note, Chuck Hess um, already submitted to me um, his own cost estimate for all the land development, design, engineering, and permitting. So we have um, all of that money together and accounted for. So once we revise it, mm -hmm. it's very small tweaks. Mm -hmm. um, it looks great. I'll be able to finalize the budget this afternoon, finalize the plan for how we're approaching the project, because that is one of the big grant questions. They want to know, oh, okay, who's going to be in charge of getting the community engagement? And then I'll submit it. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. So I guess like pulling back the brakes on that initial concept was the right thing to do. Because after this special meeting, I was wondering, like, who really does the park design? That's not really in the purview of a uh, architect. So I'm like, oh, truck's going to be the one. Because we have stormwater management, it's reaching the wall building. It's really, it's really trying to explore everything, every feature that we have across the street and maximizing it and making it more community accessible, making it, making it beautiful. So I mean, that, that's. That's my focus, you know, let's, let's, let's build Marion Township. Definitely. Yeah. So, By the yeah. way, uh, Kim, um, yes. Irene, everybody, um, I did resend the forms. I signed them yesterday, but I did it while I was uh, out and about. Like I used a hotspot. I, apparently it didn't send. So please let me know that you got it because I sent it today while I was on the, the hotel Wi-Fi. 
I did receive it. Oh. I received it about 10 minutes ago, I believe. Okay. When we Thank you, Peter. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. Yes, yeah, no problem. Thank, thank you for telling me because I I would have operated under under the expectation that it sent the first time, but <laughs> but Definitely. so we're gonna be rocking and rolling this afternoon with all of that. Anyway, Excellent. Yeah. So much, Kimberly. Yeah. I guess on the same note, it's the Senator Key. The next item is the Senator Key discretionary funding. Uh, FY two uh, financial year twenty twenty five. That's to adopt the resolution. 2024-8, which is congressionally earmarked funding for rural community buildings. Uh, initially, we thought we were going to apply for the $2 million. We backed off of that. We're only applying for $250,000 for the planning. So that's um, that's a little bit of a change because that particular uh, grant application had a mandatory match. So for right now, we're, we're pulling back on that. Uh, the next item is the DCED open application for COVID-19 ARPA PA multipurpose community facilities program grant and that deadline is April 30th. No, it's April today. It, it, April exactly. April today. So we successfully yeah. applied to the congressional grant yeah. that was submitted to the yeah. user, that was submitted to Casey. It was also submitted to John Fetterman's office. Wonderful. Um user's office took the lead on that. Yeah. Um one of his assistants um immediately got on the phone with me the Monday after we submitted and said she was going into committee to expressly discuss Mary and Thomas's request. Um, I haven't heard further, but she said it's going to take a while for them to go through the parameters. But for me, that's great momentum, and I'm hopeful that we'll get some further questions on that side of it. Uh, but again, the due date for the COVID-19 ARPA funding is today. today. Okay, I called it. Let's go on again. So, okay. Did you guys have anything further on that? For the grant due today? Yeah, any, anything else with regards to the new building um, proposal, anything like that, grants? Um, there is no grant in the open. Yeah, no, no, um, no, like any more with respect to these previous comments. Anything else? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, the next item is the LSA grant account to receive uh, funds uh, from uh, the LSA grant account has been opened to receive funds. Uh, this is at Fulton Bank. Um, I think it's just a housekeeping matter, but I need permission at the next meeting to place a thousand dollars in that account. Account is actually open, but we we already received a statement, but we need to put a thousand dollars in it to maintain it open. Um, I don't know. If, if, I mean, Irene, you, why don't we just yeah. make a motion quick to do that now? That's that's a housekeeping item. Okay. All right. So I'll make a motion to deposit a thousand dollars in the LSA grant account into Fulton Bank. Second. I'll second. Uh, okay, Jesse seconded. <laughs> Hey, Aye. Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. I just wanted to make sure like is if that's something needed a motion or not because it's uh it, it yeah it's better to just when in doubt motion it. Yeah. I mean the account was already created by um I think a previous uh, meeting that's just moving the funds over. Okay. Sewage management program, um the scheduled online uh, maintenance meeting for May 2024. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So are we going to do that here or are we going to do that at like the school or anything like that? I don't um, know what the uh, what the attendance might look like. I yeah. know we put a few at the, uh, the town meeting, which I think it makes sense to have it at the school. Uh, you know, with this meeting, it'd be more of a educational kind of thing. So we want to describe to folks, you know, what kind of systems they may have, uh, kind of one lot systems they may have, and uh, you know, give them some ideas of what what the do's and don'ts might be with an one lot system. So it'd be more of an educational thing. Um, okay. I think the school could work, but it is a rather large area. I don't know what we might expect to turn out to be. So. Um, I'm not sure that we said a little township set up yeah. on that at this point, but what was the date of that? Do um, we have a date set, or are we just looking at no, no date? No date set, just okay. looking for May sometime. I would think probably towards the latter part of May. What are your thoughts, Irene and Jesse? Um, yeah, I guess it's, it's the availability at the school is, is really what our well, do, did I hear that correct? That are, are we going to do it at the school, or are we going to do the first one here at the township building and just kind of see how it goes? We, I guess we could do the first one at the township building. If we have an overwhelming amount of people, then uh, we could do it at uh, the school. I mean, that makes sense, but. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't see 
Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, help educate people. I mean, that's really yeah. that's the thrust of the whole meeting is to let people know what they have and how they can take care of it. So. I guess it's a little bit more informal. Um, the last meeting was very like tight when we were scared. Um, <laughs> I was like nervous that they come in with pitchforks and torches, but I think it, it worked out really well. Yeah, it went really well. I didn't realize how much you get hated for sitting up here, but uh, I don't. I didn't feel that vibe towards the end of that meeting. That's what's happening. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, I think it went really well. Um, but I do want to thank you all for uh, trusting in the care tracker application, Peter, especially to you for recognizing that this is an application that certainly could work for the township. Uh, I hate to say you use the word guinea pig, but you guys did to allow us to get that out into the market. Uh, I had a couple small tokens of our appreciation for that with the water bottle, uh, but uh, we have one for each one of you. But I can tell you that you know it's really gained some momentum. Um, there is now seven service providers registered in the township, uh, and we had eighteen uh, reported pumps in in March of twenty twenty four. So we need to get people to comply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huge turn. And I think uh, with another meeting in, in May, you know, that'll kind of keep it in front of everybody and I'll know that they need to get out and, and take care of that system. Uh, DEP and, and a lot of other um, organizations recognize that pumping is the number one <laughs> band aid or repair or maintenance that you can do for an online system, followed by just assuring that you have some sort of solid bathroom in the tank. So those are two major components that will correct a lot of the, the smaller problems in, in the township. I'm not saying it will correct them all, but certainly there are some, some other areas that need some more attention. But uh, I think if we can get that word out there, it'll, it'll definitely prolong the use of the format system in the township. Can I ask you a question? It just, again, it's a clerical kind of housekeeping thing. I've been trying to keep track of all the, the pump out billing that comes through. Can I just ask your office to just send us like a, a total of a year to date total how much um uh has been uh just for that particular line item just for the pump out okay. credit sewage management program thing. Sure. I think that I've been keeping track of it. If you if they could just attach the bill numbers because I want to make sure that everything in my my system is up to date. So like the <laughs> Bill has an uh, invoice number. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So this way, because I because I think I missed a couple, and I want to make sure it, it's clear it's delineated because we have to track our levy to make sure that our levy is is consistent with the charges that you guys are providing us with. This way, we can adjust our budget up or down. Yeah, I can tell you that you know we're we're right in the sweet spot with the budget. There's still money left over. Yeah, uh, and I think that you know going forward, certainly next year, going to be much. Much to do. I mean, the first year was we had a little bit of heavy lifting to do, but uh, I think the next year should be go really smooth. So I do appreciate you guys for trusting care tractor. You know, any townships that need to use it, you know, they put on my marketing hat, but uh, we think that this is certainly software that can help not just in Marion County, but many, many townships out there because it, it certainly uh, eliminates a lot of the administrative. Uh, work that has to be done. So, again, thank you for that. Just stay up there. Yeah. <laughs> the next item is the Act 537, uh, the draft Act 537 special study. Um, you had submitted the final draft to the PACDP. Yeah, it uh, actually would be called the final. Oh. The point, not a final draft. You guys okay. approved it. Uh, I was just waiting for the approval from the state. I have Thought I'd get a phone call pretty quickly with the way that we kind of wrapped up that 537 and basically saying it's not a feasible uh, project unless there's some money awarded. But I haven't heard anything uh, from from Tim Wagner at uh, the South Central region. Uh, I did have a phone call with him prior to submitting it, and he seemed to understand the situation and, and the way that the township was going to move forward with it. So. 
everything looks to be pretty positive with that. Um, you know, I think, um, I hope that there's no major comments, uh, you know, but I can't say for sure. I know that legal, um, they were sharing for the legal because of some of the uh, deadlines that were mentioned in the order wasn't any major concern, so I think you, we're all doing pretty good as far as the 537 plan is concerned. Thank you. We, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. You you and Kimberly. But this will be part of it. Yeah. You know, when we'll you back when, you know, when I reached out to Peter, it just seemed like it was a, a low pressure was overlooked, and this is much better. Uh, a met, much better method of, of getting students down to almost or than a gravity sewer. So, a couple of other items on the sanitary sewer engineer's report, if I could. Absolutely. I know you guys are busy and no. the sun's coming out now. So, uh, everybody wants to get out and do some flower planting. At least I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, Irene. No, I. Uh, so uh, the, the LSA Category 4 program grant, this is the, the grant that you guys got awarded in 2022. Uh, uh, we did prepare the letter uh, for the survey, and thanks for everybody's input on that. I think the survey, well, I know that the survey is scheduled to begin in the first week of May. Uh, so I want to encourage everybody to, to try and help get these door hangers out. I think uh, Kimberly has flags now. We have letters. Uh, and Kimberly has volunteered to come up and, and walk the streets with you all. So I think that is a great way to get uh, people involved and, you know, have them feel part of, of the design going forward. So they can put in a blue flag where they believe their well is. And they put a green flag where they believe their sewer tank is. Uh, and that certainly will help us with design. So we know maybe maybe we're coming in an alleyway instead of the main street or something along that line to try and keep the cost of the system down. Um, the 20. Oh. April 26th. Sounds like a. Would any be available by April 26th to? Yeah. Well, Sue so had talked to me about she was going to do it with me, and um, she's going to have Dave help her. Okay. And she's going to have somebody else. Okay. Well, then, let me know that she is available. It's voluntary to come down and help situate our day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Send me an email when you wanted what time you guys are going to do that because I can likely help. And if it's after the the school hours, I can I can drag my oldest son along and have him help too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I could get you teenagers. Well, two hundred two hundred letters uh, may not be sound like a lot. It is, it is. but it is. Um, <laughs> homeowners like to dad a little bit. They want to know what the letter is. And that's what I was telling him really earlier. You know, you're going to open hang something on the door, so we're going to come out and say, Hey, what's this all about? Next thing you know, you're going to a 10 minute conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll apply that by 200 pounds. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I, this sounds terrible, but let, we need to let Colby PD know that that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. so, so people don't get jumpy and upset or something. So, so if you could let Colby PD know, uh, that's the day we'll be going out to. Yeah, Josh, if Josh is in school until 3 15. So then we should pass it on the meeting service. Yeah, Josh, come out. Yeah. And I have a question about number five. Um, since we're going to return in this office, in this meeting room, when do you want to do it? And how do you want to get the word out? Are you going to send letters again? Or go on the website? How do you want to get the word out for that meeting? Yeah, so uh, for the town hall meeting, were there letters sent out? Post. I know it was. It was no, it was it was advertised. Uh, but I, I think yeah. honestly, sending a letter might be the most direct way to get people. It, yeah. It's unfortunate because of the cost that goes with it, but that's that's how we get our broadest audience in this township is a direct mailer. Yeah, and we need to include on the letter, please, about for future meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Please check the website for future yeah. meetings. Yeah. The other, the other thing too, Peter, just as a housekeeping measure, I guess at the beginning of every meeting, 
um, maybe we should just now please continue to get your, your septic systems pumped out and inspected. Just make that as a, a reminder at the beginning of every single meeting. So can we include that language at the beginning um, mm -hmm. on our thing so that we know we could do the public um, so you know, just as a friendly reminder? Let's let's actually make a, a little section there for reminders. So like we obviously still have the anyone wishing to address the board, but we could also have another like little bullet point of the the on lot management stuff. And if there is anything else that we need to issue reminders for, like the car show is next month on the 11th, um, that we can put that in that reminder section to just have it structurally be a part of the agenda every board of supervisor meeting. I like that. Okay. This is writing it down and we'll get it. Uh, I awesome. Guess it's writing. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, so just to kind of wrap up, uh, would be uh, uh, the LSA 2022. Uh, we did have some money left over in that budget, so we're going to finalize the survey. We talked about getting the door hanging it out. Uh, you all were awarded another grant, uh, 2023 LSA grant. Uh, for $69,570. And in order to try and wrap up that little type of design so we are ready for construction uh, after, uh, through that. Period. So, and uh, those monies went directly to you. Yeah, so, no, we need to meet. So, uh, this is one of the things that I was doing that was too about a year ago. I think we have no dates. Yeah. It's a reimbursement form. So actually, it's different than our funding. Our funding will give it to okay. you. But LSA, you can request reimbursement from the state. So the state's bank hold it okay. until you prove you spent it and have the bills. Okay. So um, Joe and I went through all the invoices. Okay. I have it prepared for you for you to write the first reimbursement. So all of that for the existing 2022 LSA funding that you conducted up until this point, you can ask that from the state and that's how the grant works. So you're going to see a nice pot of money coming to that account we can put a thousand dollars in once we see that yeah, okay for auditing purposes that's why I'm asking like, why don't we are seeing this money yeah thank you so yeah, it was money you get people to get that out there uh, yeah we have a report for you with all the invoices uh and the money that's been spent who is that that great. It'll be the same thing for the 2023, and we can hear exactly what, what we have uh, uh, the, the grant management done in our office for the 2022, and it'll be easy to go into the 2023. It's a housekeeping question. I can give you a call in afterwards. Um, I'm, with that. I'm just, I'm just trying to figure this out, how to deal with it with auditing, so I'll speak about it another time. Sure. Yeah, I'll give you a call. Okay. Other than that, if you have any questions for me, I want to go back to number five with question. You said at the end of May, um, that's Memorial Day. Yes. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that and that's when everybody does summer starts and I don't know if anybody has any vacation plan. So do we want to do it maybe beginning to middle of June? That's actually not a bad idea, Lisa. Yeah. Maybe like towards the middle of June since and everybody get their their first summer vacation in and do it like in the middle of June. Yeah. We're not opposed. I, I think that this whole thing is kind of a big puzzle to make sure DEP is satisfied with what's going on in Marion oh, Township. Yeah. For years, it went really nowhere, but thanks to the new board and the staff, you guys have some momentum here. Um, it's it's an educational thing. I think you could do it in June. Wouldn't be any problem. But like the best or best time to do it, obviously, is spring, early summer. So folks know, you know, what I need to get my tank pumped. We recommend that they're pumping during the growing season because that allows the pumper to go out and kind of observe what's happening out there around this the online system. Uh, and most people are are, are active then, and uh, you know, based on the number of pumps, it seems like there's a lot. The township. So certainly June's fine with me. Uh, I think if we can home in on a date, we, we already have a, an educational program and up. There. But I think it's important to also invite uh, Scott from uh, SDE to, to attend as well as the SEO. Um, Absolutely. And we could so, coordinate with schedules, can't we? 
Yeah. So do we do we tentatively want to shoot for June twentieth? That would be the Thursday before the Board of Supervisors meeting. Sounds like a sounds like a date, Peter. That sounds good. Okay. June twentieth. Um, so you said that's a Thursday. Yep. What's so a third Thursday? Seven or six. I would do seven. Stay, stay consistent. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm lucky if I look two days ahead of tomorrow. You want to hear Kimberly getting all that? But I think all. I think Joe's the. I'll give you a call then with respect to the funding so that I understand a little bit better so I can have the material ready for auditors. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. It's basically just cancel checks, scans, cancel checks. I have all those stuff. So, yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, I just don't want to be caught with that. My pants down. So, okay. so, so we're not going to Yeah. You know, you don't want to get involved in an audit from. Oh, no, no, no. So I'll make sure I have all my ducks lined up for that. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. 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 So, um, two quick things before I leave. Um, the sewer management program reports and charity project. I think it's the main secretary email. Mm -hmm. I don't have a carbon copy in the UIR. So I can forward, I can yeah. get you to that carbon copy. No, I think they forward everything okay. that needs to be forwarded. So, oh, okay. the, no. but we'll talk about that. And then today I will notify the main session email and all the supervisors once the grant has been submitted. I've been now waiting for me to finalize that plan and then. Are you saying to the end of the meeting? Are you saying to the end of the meeting? Should not be born. Okay. Yes, I need more. Yeah, I need more. Copy these quickly, and then great. If Peter, I have one question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been sleeping better since we started working with these guys? Yes. Like not as a joke. I I just have. But because before you guys and, and before Jesse came on board, I was like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I actually, I, I realized that my stress is so much less and I'm sleeping better since you guys came into the picture. So, yeah, you know, you're such a... Well, thank, thank you. I think, you know, with yeah. SDE here, certainly we yeah. have a, a real good relationship with them. Yeah. And it's not just their consultants with you guys. But yeah. They actually turned up the heat and expect them. So, I mean, that's all good. I'm a little representative in your community. It's nice to see. I'm like, oh, my wife this morning. She's like, oh, I'm going up to marry this. Yeah, they really, they really care about their community. It's really, really nice to see because, you know, I, I consult my, I attend a lot of different, uh, a lot of different municipal meetings. And some people are only there for either, you know, the notoriety of being a supervisor or maybe a small, Jacket or somebody covering their health insurance and, and coming up here, it's nice to see that you know, yeah. you have a buddy that we get to be in. Yeah, it's, it's work with you guys. Uh, keep up, you know, yeah. keep up the work. It's, it's, it's very refreshing to see. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy your flowers this afternoon. No, I'm not. Grants and flowers. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys again. When you look at it, make sure everything's good. Could I just quickly flip it through to the copy of the Yeah. The notary public. Yeah, it seems. Okay. Yeah. And the only issue is that Henry Saint is an at the top of that. So I'm sorry to. Oh, one you. more one more thing to fill yeah. out. You could actually <laughs> put that you were the one who was there. And then maybe yeah. With a top five and a too. As long as we have this stamp, I'm yeah. Happy. Yes, I, I do want to re scan this one. Good to see guys. Thank you so much. Are you guys okay with this meeting then? So the next item for discussion is the proposed short-term rental ordinance. Attorney McFarland sent the short-term rental ordinance and resolution 2024 for approval to be advertised in May. 
um, not to put the brakes on this a little bit. Um, I just, uh, I guess I have a couple more uh, questions for Colin. And this is as a result of going to that PSATS conference. Um, there was a there was a brief discussion over uh, some issue with zoning. And my understanding is it is these short term rentals are permitted within our zoning with respect to Airbnbs. Um, the gentleman that had the discussion was talking about that. Oh, once you create these Airbnbs, you create these micro hotels. Mm -hmm. um, but going through that concept, it was more like so now there's nothing stopping people from either using their house as a big Airbnb throughout the entire year or selling their house to someone who wants to use that Airbnb throughout the year. And so the concept is do we want to have a community of Airbnbs? Do, or do we want to have a community of homeowners that with an occasional Airbnb? Because I don't want to say it destroys the community. Maybe I'm looking for a different word. It um, it changes the dynamic in a way that it, we don't want. Yeah. So so I want to take one more look at that short term rental ordinance again and say, do we want to limit it to six months out of the year? Uh, um, yeah. And, yeah, and I think because well, I I had asked Colin specifically about that, and I think he had said uh, part of it was zoning, but yes. if there is something that we can put into the the ordinance, um, I wanted to see it limited to not even like six months, but like you can't Airbnb for more than I don't know a collective one to two months out of the year or something like that. I mean, I'm 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 comfortable ish with a three to six month time frame, one to two months kind of really restricts that person. But I, I think it's just something that when I was at that PSATS meeting, it just something just struck me. Um, and that goes along with some of the other items that we have for discussion today. It's creating this community and fostering a community, fostering home ownership, fostering family and having more things to do within this community as, as a family. And as people who want to remain here and live their lives here. And not to say I'm against Airbnbs, I'm not, but at the same time, I think we need to take a step back and say, what is that doing to the dynamic of the community if all of Main Street is all of a sudden trans individuals, Airbnbs, they come in, they trash the house. Again, it's, you know, there's restrictions on what you can into on a property, but at the same time, it's just Something something left with a funny taste in my mouth when that guy made that that remark. So yeah, um, ultimately so. your statement about it being little like micro hotels is hundred percent accurate. It's it's something that is not in in most municipalities properly accounted for or regulated in the sense that it's it's somebody's home that other people are constantly coming and going out, out of. So you have a lot more uh population traffic. Um, and you have a, a much different use of that property that your zoning really isn't accounting for. And a lot of your ordinances really aren't accounting for. So I'm going to take a look at it again this week before we get to the meeting and, and again, ask Colin's opinion. You guys, you know, same thing. A lot of concerns I have with Yeah. Because, because there's a, people are using them for drug traffic. People are using them for other sorts of activities, mm -hmm. RVs and things yeah. too, but... Yeah, I mean, but that doesn't prevent you from using your home for the same either. But I think it, to me, it, it it was there was a lot of remarks that were at the um, special meeting for the building uh, that really had me take a step back. I honestly have to say a lot of things at the PSAS conference also made me take a step back and say, you know, Peter, you and I have been very reactive to everything that's been going on in the community because we've been plugging holes in the dike. And I mm -hmm. think moving forward. We've always discussed about being proactive, and I think it's time that that we we start getting there. Um, I'll 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 save those comments towards the end if it doesn't come up in a, another section, but I'll, I'll give okay. you some of my thoughts on that. All right, the next item is the proposed long term rental inspection ordinance and fee schedule. Um, and the uh, craft had provided some sample ordinances. Again, we need to review that and, and move forward with that. Uh, the next item is 4050 Conrad Wiseman Parkway. I don't think we have any particular updates about that. We're just waiting for some feedback from Colin and possibly Tolby PD and craft uh, services. Uh, the next item is Western Burke Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403, the amendments, the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, the meeting is at, on May 16th at 7 p.m. at Heidelberg Township. 
Um, uh, who will be able to attend? Because I'm out of the state at that time. Yeah, yeah, Peter and Jessica. Okay. Okay. So Peter and Jessica will be attending that. Thank you, guys. Um, the next item is a property maintenance issue, Fix It Here Canal Road, which is owned by AT&T. At uh, the March meeting, we approved Attorney McFarlane to send one final letter to AT&T uh, to the new headquarters in New Jersey and the property owners uh, for permission to be on the property. This uh, notice of violation was sent to people 11th, 2024 from Kraft. Nothing further unless Colin has any uh, comments for us at the meeting. Back to number 10. Um, I'm sorry. Do we need to reapprove the new date for them to go? Because it was already approved for. Um, yes, we'll, um, we could do that at Thursday next week. Okay, that's not a problem. Peter, okay. will you be here for Thursday? Uh, yeah, I'll be there for Thursday. Okay. Wonderful. Um, the next item is the property damage from snow plows. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of areas of damage fixed uh, by the. Uh, there's a couple of areas of damage by the plows during the snow removal and residents are stating they would like the areas fixed. One would be Al Fernandino in the alley behind his garage. The grass and dirt was badly damaged. Uh, stream, uh, we need to streamline the process so that people can submit damage to things. So- um, I put out there yesterday. Yes, 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 thank you. Oh, which, which took off this structure? It must be warm in here. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, over there. No, I- yeah. I I, I fixed up a lot there. Okay. 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 And that's fine. So I think, uh, again, we have to come up with a policy and a procedure on how to uh, pursue this. I hate to be one to generate paperwork, but I think we need to come up with a standard form. Uh, we need to have photos that can be submitted of before and after time date. Um, let residents know that, again, maybe under reminders uh, towards the winter time, if there's any damage to their property as a result of. Uh, no removal to please take photos, notify the office, email us, drop off pictures. But I think we need to create a form so that we're not getting the um, kind of sidelines like saying, hey, you messed up my yard uh, with the snow plow when it may not have been the case. Yeah. So it could have been it could be done as soon as possible. Yeah. 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 Two months later or something. Yeah. Uh, I think on the website, they could submit photos. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Upload. Absolutely. Yeah. Upload. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, um. I mean, we have the ability to 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 do our own documentation and, and, and do things. We want to make sure we. I, I definitely want to run the site column during the next meeting to make sure we're not doing something that we shouldn't be doing. But I think we need to have some kind of an evidence trail. Um, and I agree with Jesse. It needs to be done. Maybe maybe within a month or so. You know. Yeah, it has to be yeah. done within a reasonable time. Yeah. Frame. Yeah. Uh, are, are there more damages? Uh, are we so past? No, what was out? So there was a lot of damage to Twilight Acres' property behind my house. They, uh -huh. they, it looks to me like they repaired it themselves. They, had, it was very filleted. But again, I, I didn't see what had happened. I don't know if it was a campus plow or it was another plow or, or a guy with his tractor came back there or well, even, they, even, they, even they, there's contractors that have pickups with plows on and they yeah. sometimes accidentally yeah. drop them, right? Yeah. So well, I, they, uh, Twilight Acres. Clean up themselves. Yeah. Right? They did. Well, yeah, they, right. So I don't know, but yeah. um, it was a huge play. Um, so I don't know. Uh, well, the thing of it is, our our plots are ten foot broad, and uh, mm -hmm. the, and it's a small alley. It's a small alley, six, six, seven foot, mm -hmm. and that, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's okay. And this happens. We just want to create a process. If you yeah. guys have any input to help us create a form, I'd really appreciate it. You guys uh, seem to be fabulous with all that stuff, so I appreciate the help. Um, oh, you, you guys are great. I, I'm so glad that you're here with us. So you, I, I tell you all the time. Yes. Yeah, so, all right, next item is uh, road maintenance. And, and Peter, this is uh, one of those items that I, that I, I really had a, a lot of good input in from um, the PSATS meeting that I went to. The the Mm -hmm. the uh, conference. So on your, uh, we talked about cleaning the culverts to create a five-year maintenance plan to get roads fixed and maintained on a preventative cycle. Um, and it says that you're going to supply a valve from that. This yep. is where I really need you, Butch, too. And so well, what I, I think, I'm sure John's going to have some input with this, too, because of uh, the, um, uh, the emergency management aspect of it and flooding. Um, and maybe we should get a little bit of an opinion from uh, Chuck as well. So 
my thoughts were we need to start inspecting these culverts. You need to go out, document, and find all the culverts that we have in Mary Township. You need to start taking photos. We need to start detailing. Like, I guess it would be easiest to kind of create the, the, the database. Forgive me, I'm terrible at databases. Location of the culvert, where it is, like a, a point on a map. And Peter, if you could help out with this part of it, the condition yep. that it's in and have, you know, when it was inspected, inspected, so to speak, loosely by us. So we visualize it, see if there's any problems. If it needs attention, we involve the engineer. But this way, we have that database of the culverts. We have the database of roads and any other hazards that may arise as a result of the condition of our roads and um, right of ways. We need to really start doing this. So we got to get you busy, which, um, you know. Uh, uh, Val and me uh, uh, made a copy of the diverse roads yesterday or the other day. So, but we did that already. Right. Yeah. But but I need I need I need you, well I was gonna say we need you to start going out and finding where all of our culverts are because there's some areas that I'm not even familiar with. I don't even know if I can go right, right. 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 So so we need you to start going out, taking a look at the culverts, getting getting in and around as best as you can. If you can't physically get into places, you can call John. John can come out with the drone, take a look with you because we need to start looking at our infrastructure. Um, and if we need to, we need to get Chuck involved. So if we have a database of culverts, we have a database of roads, we have a database of all the roadway and accoutrements that we're responsible for, this way we can, again, put it on that map. We can say, okay, we're gonna go here, here, there, there. We're gonna start taking a good look at everything and get it on a schedule. Having said that, there was something also very interesting at the PSAP conference, which, uh, I thought it was very interesting how the one engineer uh, phrased things for budgeting and it's doing things a little bit. I feel like I got to look at Peter when I'm talking to him. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different from how we're budgeting now. Now when we budget, we look back and see what we spent. What this engineer was discussing, he said, take all the roads that you have in your township, um, get an estimate on how much it would cost to fix all the roads in the township and divide that number by 50. And whatever that number is divided by 50, that's what you put in your budget for every year for the roads. I thought that's a very interesting, interesting way of doing it. So I'm just going to throw out, let's say, you know, that number is $10,000. I know that's a horribly low number, but if we say we're going to dedicate $10,000 every year, so in 15 years, uh, just for easy math here, so in 15 years, we know that road, that, that one roadway is going to cost us 150,000, that 150,000 is there. We have to start thinking of this map and, and these the ways of budgeting a little bit differently. And again, I'm hoping for a little bit of input with for Chuck, because if we start planning ahead, that's when we have a better grasp on the situation. Now, of course, we know problems arise. I mean, I'm happy to say we spent over $500,000 in repairs in the last year. Again, I'm, I'm just tired of plugging the holes. I want to start planning ahead. So, so this culvert concept, we need to include the roads. Anything that has to affect us, I need you to get out there and start documenting. Um, if these ladies can help you create a database, if Peter can help you create a database, if we can have one of those fancy on-screen maps with pins saying that these are where our culverts are. So that, right, so label, because I can tell you from the stuff that I'm doing with the financial stuff, there's so much data that is lost unless I'm gonna rifle through boxes and look for stuff. So we need to have the materials easily at hand, easily available so that, you know, which can go up to a map, let's say in here and say, I looked at these culverts, here's where all these culverts are. And you're gonna stick a little pin in the map so that we know where everything is, we know what kind of condition is, and we know how we need to maintain it. Do you, do you guys agree? I know I'm getting chatty. No, I, no, I agree with that. Yeah. And, and just, just even scheduling, hey, these days I'm gonna drive these roads. Right, which comes in yeah. and says, I'm going to go to these roads and look at these roads for that. Yeah, right. Unless you can go to the whole township and a right. day and things. Like, there's not, there's not, you know, we only look at one or two, you know, but but aside from all the other things that you do, but but this is important because I, I hate to say it because of the, the event in Baltimore, infrastructure is going to be the next big buzzword, and there may be monies available for it. And so, if we could take advantage of a bad situation and, and make it a better situation for us, I think it's important. We, we have so many areas that are failing. Mm -hmm. If we could move forward and, and start getting to prevention versus reaction, I think that's that's the key here. 
So again, you ladies, you have any idea of how to do this? I've got the thoughts in my head. I know Peter thinks in, in one way. I could tell you Sue and I would think things in a different way. We need everyone's input to how it's best to document the data, communicate the data, and preserve the data so that the next group of people aren't like, what the heck is this? Because I am like, what the heck is this? When I'm looking at all the, the financial data, I could follow some of it, but it needs to be in a format that anyone moving forward can understand it. So right. you don't have a lot of data to where it yeah. actually makes sense. Any idea, Peter? Yeah, data, data is useless without the correct context to make it actual yeah. usable information. So I'm 100% with you on that. The only concern that I'm just going to throw out there with the budgeting is we may go through the alternate means and we still absolutely should pursue it. Not being yeah, a naysayer no. here, but we may find when no. we calculate it out, it's oppressively expensive or we don't have right. the budget to do it. But right. I, I'm but all for trying new it, and creative right. ways to, to look at things. Yep, yep. And, and, then, and that's what I think the big takeaway for me was it, it was we have to start being proactive rather than reactive. And I think, again, you and I are so used to plugging holes with everything here. And I just want to, I, I finally feel like we've got things under wraps. Of course, something else can blow on, you know. Um, we've got things under wraps. We have things moving along, but we need to start moving forward. And I think that's where, uh, again, I'll get some, some more concepts as we move along. All right, I'll move on. All right, next item is the Wintersville Road Culvert, 3020 Wintersville Road. This is authorized in February, and this is gonna this is put out today. We're looking forward to seeing that done. Uh, the next item is PennDOT maintenance. Uh, letters were received from PennDOT Road Maintenance bringing, uh, being performed in August and September 24, uh, 2024. The work will be on State Route 3004, Charming Forge Road, between Tulpa Hawk and Forge Road and North Heidelberg Road, State Route uh, 4010, Christmas Village Road, between Rarisburg Road and Heidelberg Road, and State Route 419, Rarisburg Road, between Conrad West and Parkway and Four Corners Road. Up to Oil and Tip. Oil and Tip. Okay. And they put out their flags and stuff like that. Um, the next item is a 2024 road project. Engineer Hutz gave us estimates for Sheridan Road South from William Penn Boulevard to Lebanon County, 3,000. Of three hundred twenty-six thousand four hundred forty-five dollars and ninety cents. I think I got to the ninety cents, but uh, Sheridan Road North from William Penn Boulevard to School Road, three hundred seventy thousand six hundred one dollars and forty cents. Stafford Road, nine hundred one thousand four hundred eighty-four dollars and nine cents. And Wintersville Road, five hundred thirty-two thousand five hundred thirty-two thousand two hundred sixty-one dollars and ninety cents for a total of two million one hundred thirty. $1,793.09. We approve the Sheraton Road from uh, south from Williamton Boulevard to Lebanon. So I think that's going to be a pretty good and big project for us. I know when Chuck was here the other day, um, he said he's working on it and he'll have some updates for us for next Thursday. Excellent. Uh, order for supervisor. Excellent. But I know we got through Sheraton, but yeah, school road we have to really take a look at because, yeah. Least, yeah. uh, no, no, I understand. Yeah. And, and I guess on that note, uh, can we have like a little sign somewhere like in the office saying, hey, this is the, the road project coming up for 2024, please see if I yeah. uh, because so many people think that we're not doing anything. And so at the, I'm hoping by the next meeting I could have some um uh just financial uh stuff to present to the public that yes, last year we spent over five hundred thousand in in, in full and road repairs. This year, this is what our, our spending is going to be. I could compare it hopefully to, to previous years and, and let people know there's there's definitely a constraint financially unless our taxes go up so astronomically, which I don't want. Um, it, it, we're very dependent on liquid fuels. And um, I mean, this is where we're at. But uh, again, through, through careful planning and budgeting, and, and I think we can get to where we need to get to. Do you I'm want sorry. to we can make a paper opinion in this? Yeah. Well, we're going to have a say like, like a summer 2024 work project for sure and for, for future and then the next. that would be great that would be great people think and know that the, we are doing something great because some people just walk into the office and they don't necessarily come to the meetings people see that thing hey look look what this is what's going on this summer this is going on so they see that we're an active uh board that see what we're doing we know we're active but a lot of people don't see it so but i just wanted to mention school road since um mr 
Who was that the other night? Man that um, was concerned on the the consoles. Yeah, yeah. So and he said he was going to come, but he didn't That's show okay. up. But so I, was, speaking of potholes, and I apologize uh, retroactively and in advance. I think there's like a. a slight <laughs> delay between when you guys are talking and when I hear you or, or vice versa. So if I if I interrupt you, I, I don't intend to do that. I'm not intentionally being a jerk. Um, but I think we have a lot of potholes this past winter, even though we didn't have a huge amount of snow was particularly detrimental to a lot of roads. Canal Road is one that I know I drive very frequently. Jesse, you noticed it. It, it looks like a, a meteor hit it in a couple of spots. So now that the weather is starting to turn, we need to get the road crew out in force with the tamper to correctly uh, prep, fill, and tamp potholes with old patch. You got that? Okay. We're, we're going to keep Butch busy. But yeah, I think like the yeah. same day is kind of banning him up right now. How much difference is probably put... Uh... Uh, to do school road versus Sheridan Road. School road is uh, $307,601 and Sheridan is uh, $326,000. So a little less of uh, about uh, $40,000 difference. Uh, oh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't have a quote. I'm out. We don't have a quote for school road. We have a quote for um the Sheridan Road from the one side of the line oh. to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgive me, school, forgive me. That looks wrong information. Yeah, school road, my understanding of that is we have, I want to say about a mile to a mile and a half, possibly two miles that still needs to be done on school road. And because of that road, um, the underlying construction of that road it has to be a full depth reclamation. There aren't really any other options unless Chuck could come up with something. And about four years ago, four or five years ago, that was a half million dollars per mile to do a uh, an FDR on that. So we'd be looking at anywhere between, in today's dollars, probably considerably more, but uh, a million to a million and a half to two million dollars to do the remaining bits of school road in the way that they had been done previously, that one that one mile stretch that was done in the past. Uh, you know, there, there are not a lot of trucks uh, traveling school road versus Sheridan uh, uh, Road. And uh, uh, I mean, I'm not speaking up for the farmer, but uh, those are the biggest complaints uh, in the township. The farmer. I'll stick up for the farmers. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. We don't disagree. We 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 agree with you hundred percent. It's it's yeah. a use. It's a use. Yeah. Yeah. We agree. I guess the other takeaway from the PSATS uh, project was is is get PSATS um, conference was get your projects all lined up. Get all the information that you need. Just die of shovel ready. And that's when you're able to look for the grants. Instead of saying, oh, there's a grant out there, what can I use it for? The lesson over and over again was have all the projects set up so that when that grant comes in, you can apply for it. And I think that's something that we need to start looking at too. So if School Road is one of those, let's have Chuck give us the, the, the prognosis, everything, all the information that he possibly can, short of shovel ready. And then this way we could start looking for the grants to apply to it and, and, and go from there. So I think that's the other important lesson. I know it costs us a little bit of money up front, but towards the, the back end of it, if we've got all that data, it's not scrambling to get, let's say, like Kimberly, all the grant information. We, we've got it ready. We can move forward and we could get things done. So, I mean, uh, we have, we have shared road in schedule. We can, we can, we can't change much not for them. No, no. Uh, all right, next item is the guide rails. Engineer House has suggested that we prioritize William Penn Boulevard for this year. Uh, he gives an estimate for $38,500. Hickory Road and Bollinger Road can follow next year. Um, and I believe he is was going to speak to, to our PennDOT representative as far as using liquid fuels co-star and, and authorizes. He was authorized to get us close. So again, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, the other yeah. day, when you were here, they did. Nobody, nobody is, is 
the guide mails. Yeah. Okay. We could try. Have we created to do lists for, for what to do? Yeah, this way. And would you would you like it if we had something like you know just hanging up for you and you could kind of mark off all the stuff you've done? Some of them might be open this way. It just doesn't get lost. Whatever. We're giving we're giving you a hundred do lists. Yeah. <laughs> and this way, but but you you have guys that you work with and you could you could delegate. You say, I need you to do this, I need you to do this, let's get back. We gotta get the ladies the, the information. So I think that's important. Um, the next item is uh, actually about school road. We received a complaint about school road. Um, and again, so I think we need to, to take a look at that. As long as you're okay with that, Peter, uh, we'll, mm -hmm. have, we'll see if we could get uh, Chuck to give us his opinion on it. Well, and if, if I recall yeah. correctly, that was actually one of the things that I had asked Chuck yeah. to yeah. look at was yeah. if, if there were any other options than a full FDR. Okay. That's one of the things that I, I believe is on the table with Chuck on that, okay. because I wanted to see if there were any other grants that we could go after, specifically um, kind of similar to whatever happened in the past to get that that first mile of it done. And like you said, just kind of have it prepared that we can apply for it every year. And if we get it, awesome. If we don't, then we try again the following year. Thank you. The next item is extending the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street, UGI. Well, let's move the pipes in the middle of the road. So that we're ready to Wow, wow, very nice. Okay. Uh, tree trimming. I believe this is another new thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been to call so far to say that we're too far away. It would cost us, it would cost us more to have to drive up to us than to do that. Okay. Would you still keep on trying to make calls out? Yeah, good. Bye, so Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, which, uh, which three each other? All of the houses are over on like a bunch of the basement. Is every road anything that's really in the storm is pulled up? Because when we uh, get a lot of complaints for our food for the one, we can we can do a pretty good job on the oh. on the tree. Well, we're still waiting for that license plate though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I know where we are. I have to call them all the way there. Get on it. I the application, it will depend on the title. Okay. So he's waiting on him. Okay. You know what I mean? We're waiting on him to get that one. Get the title. There will be the set. If you're waiting on Pendon. <laughs> it can be forever. Wow. A lot of that. It depends. Yeah. Months. Wow. Yeah. All right. Next two items are the Bollinger Road Hill Overflow Matter and the agreements. I'm going to defer to our next meeting as this uh, may involve litigation and discussion with Colin. Um, next item is equipment and equipment repair. The big truck has electrical issues uh, when the salt photo is removed and it's going to go get checked out at Owl Creek. So we haven't heard any estimates or anything yet. No, we yeah. didn't. I didn't have a lot of for a long Okay. Uh, and Peter, <laughs> on, on, on that note, um, are we able to help the guys or ask the guys to help us get onto a routine maintenance schedule for the trucks, whether it's checking the lights, checking the brakes, checking the wipers of fluid, all that stuff? Yeah, I think okay. we should we should add that as a section okay. in our our handbook. There should be a uh, a start procedure, yeah. Yeah. and there should be like a before drive procedure. And Jesse, since you work in in that industry, I think you're going to be the the best yeah. person to try to leverage uh, yeah. knowledge yeah. and experience on. But something you do before you drive, uh, a section for what ha if there's something that happens while you're driving, you have a mechanical failure, you get in an accident, you know whatever the situation is. Some of the, the the common things that we can outline, and then when you get back to the shop, um, like yeah. for example, if you were plowing snow or putting salt down, make sure you hose it down with a pressure washer, or you know, make sure that yeah, you you check the wiper blades again to make sure that you don't have to replace any before you go out the next time if there's a an emergency or something. But we can we can outline all that. But uh, again, uh, it's it's awesome having Jesse on the board because he's going to be able to to give us some some direct industry knowledge and experience on that. And I know it seems like we're putting a lot on you and uh, uh and, and all the road crew guys. We are, and, and, and personally for me, the reason we're becoming more of a litigious society. Okay, and so you go out there and something happens with the truck. Well, what was your maintenance program? Did you do this? Did you do that? 
If there's yeah. nothing there, that looks bad. If there's something there, you said, well, our guys did X, Y, and Z, and this is, you know, what happened. This is the condition of the trucks. This is the issues that we know about this disease. You know, this was a fluke or this was something that helps us, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I know it seems like it's a lot, but we need to get out of the habit of that's the way it was always done because that doesn't work anymore. We need to, yeah. to keep on moving forward. And there is there is always a better way to do something just because yeah. we have a way that works doesn't mean there isn't necessarily a better way to do it. And we need to be open and receptive to that potential. Yeah. yeah. So Val has some information. If you could please like make sure we start getting on that routine maintenance schedule weekly, monthly, whatever. Again, I'm not a vehicle person, but please you know, we need to. We need to yeah, we have those yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, next item is the equipment sales. Again, thank you, ladies, so much. This is awesome. Oh, um, about thank you, thank you. Um, Municipid, uh, we put up uh, the 1972 JD 301 tractor and loader with the Alamo attachment. The bidding started at 2500 and it sold for 5600 The 1994 JD uh, 210 C front end loader, the bidding started at 4500 and it sold for $6,625. Um, the motion is needed to ratify the sale and sign the documents. I'll make the motion to ratify the sale of the 1972 JD301 tractor and loader for the amount of $5,600. I guess you okay if I make it two motion. You, you can do it in one, you can do it in two. I like doing it in two, but I'll second. No call, Peter? <coughs> Aye. Jesse? Aye. 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 All right, the next the motion will be for the sale of the 1994 JD 210C front end loader for the amount of $6,625. Second. No Hi. 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 You guys did a good job with that. Oh, thank you. They so did, much. You, you did, did a phenomenal, phenomenal job with that. I never thought yeah. we would get that much money. Yeah, because I've been in a lot of auctions and I've seen stuff go real, real low, and you guys, yeah, you guys got off yeah. scale for money for that yeah. stuff. And you guys had the proper paper, everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you so yeah. much. So, yeah, so thank you. I was yeah. like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can't take any credit for that. Yeah, I was very impressed. I'm like, when those numbers came through, I was like, but this is this is nice. I mean, this is this is what having more people in the office to do the yeah. work is. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. All right. The next item is the tractor per uh, purchase. The tractor for the ball field maintenance. There's a quote from Agitator for a new compact tractor with loader, bucket, and three point bar for thirteen thousand six hundred. If a larger mower deck of 60 inches is added, it's an additional 2,600 for a total of 16,200. Please tell me. So, so I had talked to Agitator about looking at getting some compact for the ball field um, and a bunch of park, park maintenance. Um, so they were willing to give us 15% off, okay. actually, too. Um, so I asked them for a quote for a belly mower, the loader, and I asked for um, the tractor comes with a three point. Um, on it, uh, what it is is I asked for a draw bar, right? So that quote with all that came to around 16,200. The quote's not in front of me right now, but they were willing to also get 15% off because they've worked with us before yeah. and they know we're a municipality. And I've explained to them that I was just getting quotes right now. We had to talk about it the whole nine yards, uh, but I believe that there is a need for compact tractor, uh, particularly a subcompact because that would fit nicely with the ball field. Um, and we could use that for more than just the ball field. Because mm -hmm. um, we have all oversized equipment. We don't have anything except for a zero turn, really, that's small. And that was my thought process. And I've done a lot of research because I own one of these tractors. Uh, and the massive performs way over the top of what the Boda does. And the parts are there. Uh, it's actually made by Ezeki tractors. Um, it has two tilt cylinders for the bucket versus the one on the Kubota BX mm -hmm. series. And if you go with the um, other competitor, which is Evelyn Carries with the Coyotes, those are made in South Korea and they're fairly new to the U.S. market uh, by a company called Dong Dong Dang or it's Dong Dang. And I'm concerned that they won't be around very long to get parts for. Um, so I would rather see some sort of brand name come in here, and particularly your dealer network that's slows to here. Um, and Binkley was really willing and receptive to. And as yeah, they, they were very nice. Yeah. So 
How much uh, horsepower is that kind of thing? I believe it's 23. So, forgive me, I grew up in New York City. I know nothing about those or anything. John does all that stuff. I'm like, you want the land, you could do it. But um, so the utility would be for the park, mm -hmm. correct? And and I don't know how it compares to what we're currently using. I, I, again, we don't have anything. Nothing. Number one. Um, mm -hmm. number two, the loader's going to get. You can use it for also filling up a truck with salt, okay. moving dirt, right? The whole nine yards. You can put pallet forks on that. It has a. They come with it quick to touch. So if you would buy a John Deere or a Yanmar, they come with the. You actually have to take the bucket off. You have to get get some wrenches out. Okay. You got one of these. Yeah, you just flip, 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 boom, boom, boom. You swap it. Go. Okay. Um, I have one. You're more than welcome to. Yeah. I can run it. I think yeah. yeah. They they really and the, as for like other things like the mower deck, it's a drive over. There's none of this. Okay. You're sitting there pulling and killing yourself to get the deck in and out. You just got to make sure you get your pins on the sides up above so you can drive over the deck to put it on. Um, and there's no belts. It's all PTO in the bottom, PTO in the back. So you can use it for either a salt spreader also. You can use it for um, anything you can hook a PTO jack up to. Uh, really. Snow floor. You can get a snow blower for it. And actually, the, another thing, if, if you guys are receptive to it, you can actually get hydraulics for the front loader, right? So you can actually have a log, something to pick up logs. Um, yeah, something to put a grapple. snow blower on the front, right? You want it hydraulically versus get the PPO reverse, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I think it's the perfect size for the ball field and, and the park and every other small job that we got, but I mean, that's just me. Um, so is that a, is that a compact or a subcompact? I would suggest you don't sell the zero turn because mm -hmm. that zero turn, you can mow that whole field in a couple in and out, right? So now once you get on a normal tractor, right? It's a big deck and now you're mowing, like this, and it would work for that, right? But it seems to be big. Would it be? I believe I, I don't remember how big his deck was off hand. Do you have a picture? I picked my own tractor, but I have a back like that. That's okay. I think I think you're talking about. I think it's so much what John has. Peter, what's your input? My my question was are we looking at a subcompact tractor or just a compact tractor? I would say a subcompact. Um number one, it's cheaper. I don't think we need much more big bigger than that. Um and it would be better for getting in those nooks and crannies in the ball field. Okay. Um, now, if we want to start using the tractor for other stuff, but now you all have to remember, right? If we move the township building over there, I'm trying to think ahead, the park is going to be a little smaller too. So you're going to want something to fit in those tight spaces that's versatile. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. The only reason yeah. I, I say that is the, the difference in what that bucket is going to be able to hold weight wise so, and size wise is going to be fairly, fairly dip noticeable so, i'll say between the the compact versus the subcompact so the, the subcompact that i have which is the same time that this one is has a 950 pound um bucket capacity okay that's that's um, more than i thought it was going to be actually um, i never used it without my i have a backhoe attachment right yeah. so you would want to have a counterweight on your your, your three-way your your mm -hmm. three-way in the back um i don't need that so i use my backhoe as a counterweight right but but it does very well with picking stuff on it. Um, okay. It's a four-wheel drive. Yeah, it's a four-wheel drive unit with an executive diesel. Um, the whole thing is actually made by executive with a massive Ferguson bad man, but there, it's a very reliable engine. So. Okay. That was really my only question on that because I I have kind of the next size up tractor that you and I were talking about. I've got the uh, the compact Bobcat, and. Mm -hmm. I my lifting is only a little bit more than yours. I'd say it's probably I think it's like fifteen hundred pounds or something like that. But um, I mean, I always like I always like the more weight lifting capacity. You always need, need it, you know. But um, you also we also got to remember too. We, we got to worry uh, about the size component of yeah. it and the agility aspect of it. For yeah, that was my a little stuff there. Yeah, concern because we don't have any small tractor here. We only have like the zero turn. Mm -hmm. I, I would I would I would suggest not selling the the zero turn uh, for mowing purposes, but this would also be used as a backup too. If you needed to mow with this, you could do it. So I, that's why I threw the, the, the belly back in there with the estimate because I think it's important to have a backup in case something else. You have you take yeah. it to you take it to maintenance or something, and it's down for a week or two. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Could we get a drag finishing mower instead of the belly deck, Jesse? You you can get a you can get a back um you can get a, a pullable um yeah back for the three point yeah you can run a, yeah. a, a, a rear pull pullable one as well 
because we could oh. get a bigger like rather the belly deck is kind of limited by the the footprint of the underside of the tractor but you could get a a bigger um correct, correct. finishing and, mower yeah and i was just thinking about when it for tighter spaces that's why i was thinking this oh yeah 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 that, that's mean, fair... it's, not, it's, it's, it's cheaper to buy it up front than it is later if that makes sense also so, it, it, I mean, it does if, it is, if you want to expand your estimates to even say hey we want a lower deck and a pullable deck or, or one or the other right now um we would have to see what kind of deal we could work with with, with Binkley. but um yeah i i would almost say and I'm, I'm open to challenges on this would be we have the zero turn mower for getting in nimbly into places we have if we go the route of getting the subcompact tractor we get that with the pullable thing for doing a, a big, big area. Like if there's a 72 or something that they, they have for that. Doing uh, a... I, don't, I don't remember. There is a, a max um, <coughs> size for the two. So for like a 23 horsepower tractor, I don't know how big we could go with a pullable deck. But it, it would definitely be considerably bigger than um, the valley mower. Well, yeah yeah like i just i threw 72 out there as kind of a, a ballpark figure but if we had something that was substantially bigger than the zero turn the zero mm -hmm. turn can do the little little fiddly bits but we could mow the field in like no time flat with a with a with a large finishing deck right right yeah so that's that's not from two um and then you, you we would need to fight it out and say hey do you want hydraulics on the loader portion because now you can get a snow blower attachment for the front of it and that's run off of hydraulics Right or or something mm -hmm. to pick up log, um. But you could always retrofit that stuff later if, if need be. But right now we only for small equipment wise we're lacking in stuff to fit any. Like I, I, it's painful for me to see poor Butch out there with a full size farm tractor trying to drive that ball field. I feel bad for yeah. him every time. Well, it's terrible. I can't get it because we can't get in the corners. I mean, the bases and the fence. Yep. And you know what? One thing you're going to want for the bucket as well that's not on this estimate is some sort of tooth bar that you can detach and reattach on the bucket. So then you can use that to back drag all those grassy spots on the ball field that you can't get into those areas. If you use that with the, you use that with the, the front loaders. Yeah, you're going to want cutting a cutting blade and possibly teeth on yeah. that. Yeah. Just to give a little bit of perspective, the sale of equipment that we that we just approved, that's $12,225. So essentially, if we were to buy the 16000 Two hundred dollar setup. I mean, that's it's very minimal cost for us. Mm -hmm. so Not to I mention, think, they yeah. usually do financing terms on that. Like it would be like right. five years, no interest, or something like that. So oh. it would be negligible. Right. That right now, they're still at six years, zero percent interest. Um, yeah. they, they give you a discount if you pay cash. So yeah, so so look into all the numbers, bring it back to us, and or even if you yeah. want, yeah. 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 the dealer, or Peter and me, or the yeah. butcher, or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That tractor is, is that uh, in the middle of uh, of all the track, you know, the tractors or or the big one? No, it's the subcompact is going to be the smallest, the smallest of the series. Uh, but do they have a couple? In that? They have a couple. They have a couple that are. They have a couple in the same size tractor that uh, this one is. That have a little more power, and it's actually the same engine. They're just bored out. Yeah, a little more, yeah, and they're, 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 they're yep, and they're turned up. Um, now there is you can go like Peter was saying, we could go compact, right? Instead of subcompact, um, and we could still do that and, and look at that option. Uh, but we just gotta be keep in mind we want to be able to get that ball field, yeah, the right way, right? Um, and use it for park maintenance, right? So we don't want something too too big. You don't want to have something too big, right? right. Well, you don't want to be underpowered either. No, I would say we, uh, I, with the tractors we have, uh, I can get between the fence and the base. Mm -hmm. So you want a tractor that goes yeah. in between there. 100%. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, I'm part, I'm, I'm good. Now that you guys described this, I'm like, oh, I have one of those. <laughs> I don't know what John has. And, and it's a hydro transmission. Right? Yep, it's a hydro transmission. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I personally have the lowest horsepower one, yeah. and I have and I've been using the backhoe on that, and I, I have no problem with it. It just it, it goes for anything. I put it over, and a lot. That's not nice to it. We do have right, but this is this is really nice for small stuff. You have yeah. a backhoe that can big, big uh, a huge bunker. Yeah. 
what they might need. You know, there's, uh, there's <laughs> one, there's one toy I mean, like the rail or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's screwed. It is, I always take the backhoe, the one we have, deep on both sides of it and try to straighten it out. Mm -hmm. It's the base of it. It's screwed in the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and that could be something that you might yeah. want a sub pump pack back home for because you've got a bucket that's this big yeah. versus a bucket that's this big. I'm, I'm not concerned about how we have yeah. we have the yeah. the library to pop the broad down and make the job done. Yeah. And okay. that, that just pointed out, I think we still should get quotes and this for other items and this would be good to kind of a post comparison. Uh, and this would also we kind of satisfy the the I don't say need, but the you know people question us about um, you know why we chose that because they this is this is this is, and we know if you get some details on what the final pricing would be with all the attachments mm -hmm. a fifteen percent discount the financing if we get all that information so we can present it to the public mm -hmm. at our you know next time budget but I I'm in favor of it. Are are they are they code tower Are they what? Are they the code tower. Code tower. No. Yeah, because there's a special purchasing. Oh, um, I, don't, I don't know. I think this is. Look up postcards later. You'll be like, oh. I believe this goes right through Massey Ferguson. Um, yeah. Not to mention, yeah. we don't, I think we, uh, we're we below the, the bid threshold. So we would just yes. have to get similar quotes from three different vendors. Yes. In order to satisfy the legal requirement for, wow. for uh, proper sourcing. You have to, you have to do a right from that link then. I yes. have to get a draft up from that. Yeah, yeah. I can get a draft up, but I, I still would just mm -hmm. a personal input. Oh, 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 John yeah. 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 Well, oh, you're going to pay there. Yeah. But, but you got to remember, too, um, I don't want to see a township purchase fourth lot, right? I don't want to see them, a township or anybody, purchase something that you're not going to get parts for five years down the road, right? Because right. now they're not importing it anymore, right? And so, don't don't bang. It's not a tractor name. I grew up here in Boston. <laughs> there is an American name that we're just not familiar with. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. John Deere. John uh, in this category, you want to look at Yenmore, Kubota, John Deere, uh, well, and and Massey. Right. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, but can you open up the windows a little bit? Is that so, a you going to get the clothes? We I can do that. I can, roll. Do you want to or just... I can do it. Um, it doesn't bother me. And how fast you want? And... You can't see it. You don't go to the next. I have to all on that one. Okay. Oh, that's cool. 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 Yeah. All right. All right. So we work on that. Thank I'll you. get some more quotes together and, and talk about. So we can have discussion. Yeah, and then maybe get maybe a couple sizes of things like yeah. go a size up or down, or because you might say, you know what, maybe I do want that. Right. I can three or yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, and hopefully again with the new park, we're going to do this. Well, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. I can't with the board. Yeah, yeah, that's that's because everything you buy up front, it's better to buy it now than it is a year later. That's why I bought my house yeah. right now. And I went out bought my house and afford it. I won't worry that I mean, Frank is good. He has a magic, but I can't tell you what stuff. Mm -hmm. This is the way he has a magic. I've, I've been very impressed with the way they treat me with the warrants and process and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. They're nice people. Yeah, yeah. they would. Yes. What did it just think they were the big goat or something? Yeah. <laughs> they can't drag them all. <laughs> Cheaper goats. <laughs> all right. Yeah. 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 Next item is a trash issue. So I read through the our trash ordinance, and our trash ordinance requires all residents. There's without exception. There's a few different categories. Uh, and it's listed here an apartment unit of five or more dwellings, which I don't think we have in the township. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Peter? Yeah. yeah. A farm or commercial business. Those are the only exemptions. So any residents who may be giving their trash over to their neighbor to put in a trash bin or in a dumpster, it is a violation of our ordinance and subject to fine. So anyone that may or may be doing that um, needs to stop that behavior. Um, I will make sure that this is clarified 
succinctly with Colin at our next meeting, but the ordinance currently reads all residents without exception. The only carved out space for that is apartment unit of five or more dwellings, a farm or commercial business. Along with that aspect, the commercial business or the, anything that fits the dumpster, ex, dumpster exemption needs to provide us with a copy of the business license um, and verification that they do actually have dumpster service. So we need some type of documentation. Um, do we have any kind of a resolution or anything else that requires that? Uh, because I, within the, the trash ordinance, there was nothing that requires people to give us a dumpster exemption. I don't know if there's a resolution. I don't know if that's really a Okay. So we spoke about that a couple of meetings ago. Yes. And we... right. Sue had mentioned it at one of the meetings mm -hmm. that typically what we would do is, is have them a request. So anyone who may be burning their trash, that is illegal. Um, there, uh, I don't know what uh, um, restrictions we have for businesses within the township. So some individuals that may be working out of their house does not qualify them to, for operating a business out of their house. If you work from home, that's a very, very big distinction from having a business at that location. If you're claiming that is your business um, and it's in a residential area, again, that's a zoning issue and that's a big no-no. So we need to check to see if we have a resolution or an amendment that requires individuals to provide us with proof of service and proof of the exemption that includes their business license. Billy, yeah, it's all I think I said that he has this business, it's going to change into his residence or business to get dumpsters. So we email that to Colin. Colin wrote back and said, you know, he's still a resident, he lives there, he must follow the trash order. Correct, correct. And I knew that that would be one of the locations that's a problem. So unless the, the area is zoned for business or there's an actual business license, it, it has to follow the rules. Um, and so I guess if we don't, Peter, I, I, I don't know if it would be a resolution or an amendment to our current um, ordinance if we need to have uh, that specific verification for proof of business and proof of uh, dumpster service. Do you know anything about that? It depends. I'd have to look at the actual ordinance. So if there's something that is set by resolution or referenced as something that's set by resolution within the ordinance, we can set it by resolution. Otherwise, what we would want to do is we would want to update the ordinance to include that wording and then set things by resolution. That way we have the ability to do it a little more nimbly in the future. And I guess as another housekeeping measure, it's much easier if we provide a pre-printed form for any of those residences so they can either pull it off the website or uh, give it to us in person. Um, so I think that's another housekeeping item. Um, yeah, okay. so we have it excellent, excellent. So question on this, this track dumpster thing. Um, let's say you got a guy that's putting new flooring in his house. He rents a dumpster for a week. That's completely but different. That's so, totally different. Totally different. That's completely different. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Uh, yep. I, yep. Uh, they, they a farmer, uh, uh, gets a dumpster, but, uh, uh, one of the, one of the owners don't live on the farm. The farm can have the dumpster, in my understanding and reading of the ordinance, okay? So a farm is within that exception that you could have a dumpster. But what we have been getting some emails about is people in residences are giving their trip yeah. over to someone down the road, which we can't do. It's inviting. Yes, yeah. but, yeah. but, uh, but, but I'm saying one of the older color. Doesn't farm, live there? That's fine. Because it's uh, a farm. He, he, can, he can put his uh, uh, trash so in the house. The, the house. And they bring their trash out to the farm. If they own the farm, they, they can do that, my understanding is, but um, is it is it a good practice? No. Now there again within the trash ordinance on if you if you read through the ordinance, um, if there's minimal usage or if, like let's say you're going away vacation for two months, that ordinance provides for you to stop service. There, there's a lot of caveats within it, um, but you have to have your own trash pickup. With Mascaro, there's the bag program. There's ways to reduce your cost with Mascaro. I don't remember them offhand. 
So if that's an issue, please contact JP and Sarah so that you can find out what you can do. If you're a minimal user, if you're like a one or two bad person, I think that's the best option. So if you have a question, can you come up to the podium, please and state your name and address? Beverly Rossman, 412 Water Street, Southbrook, VA. Um, for this track issue, um, does that include um, like you have some toys or something? Does, it, does that mean you can't burn them? No, um, no, 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 no. No, no, yeah. no. Hold on. So the if you have like twigs and leaves and things like that. Uh, technically, we do have a, a separate ordinance for that. There's a burning ordinance. Those do not count as garbage. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to know. Because someone drove by looking the other week when I was burning some of my wood and, and stuff and cleaning the yard. And maybe it was just go real slow. And it's like, well, I'm not burning anything. Anyway, right. right. We had a couple instances where people were burning tires in the township. They were immediately told to stop because it's a burn ordinance violation. It could be a DDP fine for them too. So the only things that are permissible are essentially twigs and leaves. So if anyone is burning trash that is illegal, um, and and so we need to put a stop to it. Peter, uh, I think for the most part, if it's if it's visible and being seen, the first thing to do is, is contact the police. Mm -hmm. um, but we can also put um, craft uh, code on notice that this is being done at that particular property too. So okay. yes, Beverly. Yeah. Uh, also, in the burn ordinance, it says in there that if you contact the township and let them know that you're burning, and then we'll ask them what you're burning, just so we know to free calls and complaints, we can say we know that it's yeah, six. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and as Sue said, that phone is on twenty four seven. If the office is closed, please call the township and let us know if you are going to burn. That's the Leave easiest way with a voicemail. I mean, that's that's the easiest and safest way. Um, and this way, the police are 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 have something to go back to if if there's an issue as well. All right. Next item is uh, uh the Martin Water Condition, the new soft water system. A specialist was here to quote the service invoice. Uh, uh that's something the. The, for a new system, a code to replace the system would be $4,596. I believe at the last meeting, we all said we could hold on this. Uh, we've got a band-aid for what we have right now. And I don't necessarily want to invest in the money. We don't necessarily need a water softening system over the long term. So we can remove this from the agenda. Is, are you okay with removing this item from the agenda, Peter? Yeah. We paid yeah. the invoice, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, it was just that, that was for routine service for the amount of $191. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm okay with removing 28 from the agenda. Okay, well, thank you. Um, John is not here to provide us with an emergency manager coordinator report. I was at him with a PSAS conference, and uh, we attended a lot of the meetings. It was really interesting. Go ahead, Trevor. Trevor, you're also on Water Street, South of PA. What does that number 27 mean? Of 27. That was something that we had discussed earlier. Uh, yeah. uh, with respect to, I apologize for skipping over it. That was something we had discussed earlier with respect to hey, there was a little bit of confusion over uh, what had gone on with previous uh, training sessions with okay. our road crew. So I apologize that we had done that before you came in. All right, the next time is the supervisor's comments. Peter, do you have any comments for us? No comments for me. I have a lot, Jesse. You I, I, have one. Um, <laughs> I see Hudson like drawings that remind me of my yeah. comments. Okay. Um, I see a lot of agriculture not listening to speed limits in town with full loads of either manure or tankers. They have these fancy fan tractors that can do about 45 mile an hour and they fly through town and at a moment's notice, the kid would come on the street there were not stopping that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to have a lot of energy behind it. Um, no one has complained about it, but they were flying so fast one day that when they emptied out the chicken house, they had main tree covered with chicken pieces. So I just wanted to put that out there that I'm watching it. Um, of course, the tractors are moving so fast, I can't even fly one of the guys down and say, hey, uh, you guys are rolling a little bit too fast down main street here. But uh, I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention that these tractors, uh, one, are not abiding by traffic regulations and their speed is extremely excessive on their full load down Main Street. Um, well, we can put we... a general message on the website. Um, 
Remind me, everybody. I see getting that too, then. Yeah. 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 So the, the, the one of the biggest problems we have, because we could put the, uh, we could get Topa Hawk and PD out there if we, if you see it, Jesse, call them out and see if they can catch them like doing the next time they run through it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, so I think getting a sidewalk plan, getting this future vision of we are going, Marion Township is about families. Marion Township is about building the community and, and getting that message out and getting people to do that. Because if we build the building, we redo the park, we create sidewalks, we have those speed bumps in town. Now Marion, Southwood Village has become a walking community. And I think just as Chuck has said, just as Lee has said in the past, we will start seeing people fix up their homes, making this a destination, wanting to raise their families here, wanting to stay in Marion Township. Because I can't think of a personal reason for my children to stay here. There's nothing here. There's no restaurants here. There's no businesses here. There's no beautiful place to walk, do any kind of outdoor activities. If we start to work to create that, I think we're going to keep people here. And we're going to keep tax bases here. We're going to keep things moving along. And I know, you know, these are some lofty ideas. But again, if we have the concepts, if we have the plans, then the grant comes and then we're able to have everything to go and the thing happens. So, so we have a lot of, we have a lot of community outside of the village. The village. Yeah. That sees, unfortunately, they don't see the town as anything. Right. Right. So why can't we use that to our advantage being that since they're agricultural, right? Maybe have a farmer's market. Yeah. We could do yep. it. You could do it in the park or you could do it on Main Street, maybe once a month, maybe every Saturday or some, Saturday morning, nine to two or something. Something to try to get these agricultural people to see that the town isn't useless. Right. And it's not just used for right. rental units. And we what? don't need a town to building. We just need a pole building put in the middle of the park. Right. Because that's what they want. And I don't want to make a pole building. And you know what? They don't last. <laughs> they fall, they fall down like popsicle sticks. We want people to move into Marion Township. We want to have features in Marion Township that keeps them here. It's not just about buying a house, living, and going to work. We want people, people are looking for more. And unless we do more, we will lose our population. Historically, all the goods came in to Marion Township from the canal. And yep. there were shops up and down Main Street. Yep. And then the farmers yep. went into town for goods. Yep. Right. But now that doesn't even happen. Yep. Yeah. But since they all have these little businesses, maybe bring the goods back into the yep. town by using the agricultural sector that we're in. Right. We, Something we, like that. Events. So you could, again, forward thinking, you, you still wouldn't be there if you were out of board, you'd be done. So, um, <laughs> I think you know, <laughs> I'm in front. Oh, no, no, no. no, I'm just okay. sitting very, very still okay. listening. Okay. <laughs> so again, like the, the same thing, if vision, vision 10, even 12 years from now, the park and the building are complete, the garages are complete. We have nice sidewalks, the sewers in, and now people say, I'm going to invest in this community. I'm going to put in a little bookshop. I'm going to put in a little coffee house. There's a place to walk to. Once you start seeing traffic pick up, you start seeing events at, at the township building, once you start seeing those things, people start to think, you know, I always did want to have a little coffee shop. I'm going to buy this house down the street because it's up for sale. And I know that I, it's zoned for the purposes that I need. I'm going to have that coffee shop there for me to do. And you start rebuilding this community. So I, I'm going to call for an initiative from all of us to start I, doing things differently. I, I really want a community center in that building. And I love the sidewalk idea. Yeah. I love signage. We need signage. Yep. There was no plans on signage. We talked about signage, but it wasn't in the paperwork, but it's about draft. Um, it needs to happen. Yep. Yeah. I had talked to Sue about this past week. Like, Why don't we have like an Easter egg hunt? She said they used to. Yeah. And then they, they throw it over to the village. I was thinking, can we bring that back? We could we can we could bring a lot of stuff back. It's just having the manpower and, and the, the planning. We can do all these things. We just we just have to say yes and go ahead and plan it. Um, I don't see any problems with doing that, but I, you know, I guess my idea is we need to start thinking bigger and having future plans. And and once we have all that stuff, those plans in place, like that that right before show and ready concept, then we say there's a grant that's available for that. We pursue that grant, we get it, and we move forward because that's what successful townships and municipalities do. Mm -hmm. They don't just have the problem and we and look for a grant. They they take the concept. They plan, and then when the grant comes up, that's how these other places get all this money. We don't. Do we have a tree that we could do our own tree lighting ceremony every year? That they, they do? Good chance. 
Oh, yeah. Can we do our own and bring people to the town? We, we can, we can. Um, I guess I'll, I'll in fact, speak to you about that afterwards. Yeah. Because even at the tree lighting ceremony that I went to a few years ago, there was so much animosity between individuals. It was it was palpable. It, I, I, I couldn't believe it. So I'll, I'll talk to you about yeah, that afterwards. I, I question that too. Yeah, yeah. I like, um, yeah. At Christmas, how all the other towns have. Uh, Lights and so, uh, it's not bad. Yeah, it's money. Yeah, yeah. And then they can't yeah. 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 All right. So we have money. We have yeah. the new town to building with we the more repurpose we can because we do the weather. Yeah. Right. Time. Right. And it could be a sponsored program from the community association. It would be scheduled. It would be zero problem. Mm -hmm. So, Dal, do you have any comments? Um. Just that the Civic Ready is on the website. If you want to sign up to get alerts, you can put your phone number in, your house number, your cell phone number. Um, and that we are currently asking everybody to get pumped. So if they're registered with the Heritage Tracker, so you call in and get your septic pumped. And we're still looking for alerts of support for the new sewer. Mm -hmm. Lisa, do you have any comments? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ladies, so much. I, I... I can't tell you how much I appreciate both of you guys. It was just working out fabulously. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter, for joining us today. It's going to be a Zoom. We appreciate it. Don't, don't forget so, to adjourn the meeting. All right. That's what I, I was looking at my watch for the time. <laughs> so, okay. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. It is 10 56 a.m. I'll second. And we're Paul Peter. Hi. Irene? Aye. Aye. Fantastic. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Enjoy the nice weather. Yeah, you just hit uh, stop. And then uh, end the meeting.